Oh, hello. All right, take three. Here we go. I'm a professional. Hey, everybody. It's Squally Green Thumb with an update about my neck surgery. Um, I was planning on doing an update, like, right afterwards, like a day or two afterwards, um, and then give you a update on after the first week and blah, blah. Now it's over, a little over two weeks, and I'm finally doing an update. Um, and a big reason why it took me so long is uh, depression, which is not something I was fully expecting, um, which I should have been, because this isn't my first rodeo. Um, but to my knowledge, or to my memory... Not my knowledge, because obviously it was fucking wrong. Um, in my memory, I wasn't really thinking about the depressing parts of having surgery done. And I don't know if it's just an automatic response because your body's, you know, trying to heal or, or whatever it may be. Um, but also, you know, like, you feel pretty fucking worthless when you can't do anything yourself and when you start doing things yourself and you go a little overboard and your mom or your partner or live-in nurse or whoever's taking care of you um, sees you doing it and is like, no, 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 it's like, it fucks with you. All this fucks with you. And, you know, unless you are the type of person that wants to invite people into your home to see you in the state, you're gonna be pretty lonely. And, uh, you know, it's just get it's depressing and I they're definitely in the other videos that I watched of other people getting neck surgery uh, leading up to this surgery there was talk of feeling like hopeless and worthless but I didn't I didn't I didn't think it would hit this hard so that's something to look forward to but then I noticed that somebody I commented on my first video asking for a follow-up. And that is enough to snap me out of it and do my fucking duty. And come here and tell you guys what happened. Um, so first off, uh, it wasn't an ACDF. Um, when I was first told what surgery they were going to do, My surgeon's PA said it was going to be ACDF. My surgeon said it was going to be something else. I couldn't remember what the word he said was. But I googled the explanation that I was given. And ACDF was like the only thing that was popping up. So I was like, okay, that must be what it is. Um, but it's not. What I actually got was a corpectomy. Which is like an ACDF. They still go in through the front. They still remove the discs that are causing problems. I had my... Uh, uh, C6 and C7? C5, C6? I don't know. My C6 vertebrae <laughs> was removed. That is that is the biggest difference. The In the corpectomy, they remove the discs and the vertebrae. Um, and that is something that they'll, you know, only do... Excuse me. They'll only do if, like, you have multiple discs. Um... Still, same basic idea. Um, there's just a little bit more uh, of that cadaver bone in my neck. I don't know if it's affecting my uh, recovery time. If, if my recovery time is different. Because there's so much more uh, bone that needs to gel up. Um, but that, that is the thing. If you, if you feel... If you feel like I lied to you, I apologize. And if you feel like my surgery and your surgery are too different now and you want to stop watching the video, I understand. But I think the rest of what I have to say can apply to ACDF as well. Because again, it's in through the front. To cut stuff out, they put you in a neck brace. Um, so, on top of the depression... Um, another thing that is weird that 
has been happening since the surgery is I am getting different nerve pain in my arms and hand, or not even my arms, just my left arm, which if you remember from the first video, it was my right side that was having the most trouble with, and then my left side was like starting to happen. But um, now when I wake up in the morning, um, after I get up out of my recliner, because I've been sleeping in a recliner, because um, I have to sleep on my back, and if I am in a bed, I will turn on my side. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I wake up in the morning, and I'll get up, and, you know, I'll reach my phone, video game controller, laptop, whatever. Um, and once my arm kind of moves forward, um, I'll get some nerve pain. Uh, and it dulls and subsides throughout the day. Um, and there's still, like, I got tingling. I got numbness and tingling on middle finger. Um, but I brought that up post-op to one of the post-op doctors. And um, I have been having a physical therapist come uh once a week to give me exercises to do. Um, and I tell them about it, and every time they're just like, it happens, there's swelling, blah, blah, blah. I think, I don't know, because I haven't uh, had my follow-up appointment with my surgeon yet, but I think it's because they went in the left side, so anything, so like everything could be inflamed in there. I, I just really, I don't know. But hopefully... It's not a bad thing. Um, I've seen in other videos that other people have experienced symptoms afterwards. It's just very strange to me that it's happening on the opposite arm. Um, but again, it could just be because they came in the left side. Um, so, I know I'm jumping around here. I'm scatterbrained. Um, so the day of my surgery went in. Um, and again, I am, this is my third spinal surgery uh at this same hospital with the same surgeon um so i kind of knew what to expect for the most part but this one went a lot faster than the other ones i remember um my other two surgeries getting in there early and then like sitting or like laying around and then being like oh sorry all the rooms are used up, and then, you know, eventually it's the surgeon's lunch break, and, like, you don't want a hungry surgeon, so you let them eat. But you're sitting there like, oh, I haven't eaten because you told me to stop eating and drinking at midnight, and I'm just here with this IV in my arm, just chilling. Uh, but this time went very, very fast, like, to the point where I felt rushed almost, but that's fine. Um, get it done. Get it over with. That's how I feel. Uh... Yeah, you know, you go in and they take your vitals and, you know, they, um, all the nurses, anesthesiologists, um, surgeons, and anybody else who might be in the room while they're doing the work, um, come and talk to you, ask you a bunch of questions, tell you what they're going to be doing, answer any questions you have. Um, I was very anxious um because I, I have anxiety to begin with um and you know not being able to smoke weed for a week before the surgery did not help my anxiety at all and just you know just everything crazy and oh my god and you know and uh my surgery had already been delayed so i was afraid it was going to get delayed again and so i was freaking out and my first plan was, the second I got in there, to be all like, give me, give me the meds, give me the Xanax, or whatever the hell you gave me last time that calmed me down. But everything happened too fast for that. It was just like, bam, 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 bam. Um, talked to all those people, uh, my surgeon came over, drew on my neck, and was like, are we in love with the goatee? And I was like, what? He's like, I might have to cut it off. And I was like okay, I mean, I've never not had it, <laughs> but, all right, and, uh, 
and then he made a joke about being a great surgeon but a terrible barber and and you know everybody laughed and I genuinely laughed I thought it was hilarious but all of his assistants and nurses sounded like they were just kissing his ass which they should be because he's an amazing man um this surgery also unlike the others uh my both of my surgeries that were on my lower back, when they wheeled me into the room, they knocked me out right away. Um, you know, like the second I'm in, second they've got me down the hallway and into the operating room, uh, they would put the mask on me and do the, oh, count backwards from 10 thing. And I'd be like, okay. And then they'd do their do, and then I'd get woken up um, when they were done. This time, they actually kept me awake for, like, don't get scared, not for the surgery, um, but uh, they kept me awake for a good portion of the prepping me. Um, like, they had me kind of slide off of the the gurney that they rode me in on and onto the operating table and, like, it's a couple other things that they asked me to do. Um, and everybody said, hey, what's up again? But they were all behind masks, so I didn't recognize all of them. The only one I recognized was, uh, my anesthesiologist, because she's a very tall Russian woman. And so I was like, oh, obviously you. Um, but then, eventually, they, uh, and they, they, seconds before putting the, mask on me they injected me with something and they were like all right and now do the and i was out and i woke up and i was in post-op and they were like uh so first off this is my first time also uh, different with this surgery i've never been active prior to surgery uh i was never an active person until after my second surgery but um, my last two ones being lower back and affecting my legs, I would like, I was like in bed for like a, a long time before the surgery. Um, this one, I worked out hard the day before because I was like, this is my last pump before I can't lift like five pounds and that's going to suck. So I like went to the gym and I did like a full upper body thing and, uh, cause I had done leg day the day before, I promise. And, um... When I woke up, when they woke me up, you know, I felt the pain in my neck and, you know, along my nerves as I was expecting. Um, but I also felt the strongest, like, day after workout, DOMS, they call it, uh, soreness in my muscles and all the muscles I had worked out. Um, uh, I guess, like, my body was like, we can't. We can't tend to these tiny little muscle tears. We got to take care of this shit right now. So, um, as cool as it is that, um, you know, my traps were gigantic when my doctor had to cut through my neck and, and see how big of a strong boy I am, I don't recommend working out the day before surgery. But then they started giving me the meds, the painkillers, so that went away. Um... As far as my painkiller situation in the hospital goes, this is another, again, this is a completely different surgery, um, and I am a different man and, than I was before, and it's a different world, uh, medicine-wise and for me. Um, so I think I mentioned this in the last video. I told them that when they, when I was in the hospital, they could give me whatever the hell they normally give and I'm like, whatever it is, whatever stupid, ridiculous, uh, synthetic heroin crap you give, like, give it to me in the hospital, I don't care, I'm there, I'm under your watch, like, whatever, um, but because I had picked up a painkiller habit after my first surgery, I was like, do not send me home with any narcotics. Like, if you send me home with anything, I want it to be completely non-narcotic, non-opiate, um, and I'm probably barely going to use it and just smoke weed anyway, but 
or, or eat edibles mostly because we'll get to that in a second. But um, I was like, you know, but while I'm in the hospital, give me give me the goods because I don't want to feel anything and I feel safe around you guys and I'm not going to rob you. I'm not. I, I was never that big of a fiend, but... If I have it at home, I'll find a way to get you to refill it, and then, <clears throat> and they were like, oh, okay, so, they wheel me in the post stop, and they're like, hey, um, hey, so, like, uh, you know, we saw the notes, give you whatever in the hospital, don't send you home with any narcotics, I'm like, yes, absolutely, thank you, so, the ladies shoot me up, and she starts with morphine, and... She, and then she's like, all right, how you feeling? Like, still pretty rough. And she's like, let me give you some fentanyl. I'm like, fentanyl, that's killing a lot of people, but sure, whatever. I'm under your watch. I'm under your care. And then she's like, all right, and we're going to give you this to help with your, um, nausea. And I'm like, awesome. And she's like, how you feeling? I'm like, still pretty fucked up. I told her about the muscle thing. I'm like, all my muscles hurt. And I'm like, we've covered the pain in half my body we need to cover the other half she's like okay she's like can you swallow and I'm like let's find out and she gave me Percocet and I was like okay fine and and I was feeling good and not in pain anymore um they wheel me around I'm out of it but I remember they wheeled me to get an x-ray done um and then they wheeled me into my post-op room where I had a roommate um, and the second I was in that room, they were like, okay, no narcotics. And I was like, no, you can give me my narcotics now. Just don't send me home with any. And they're all like, oh, the sheet says no narcotics, so we're not going to give you any. I was like, all right, fine. Um, but it wasn't fine. It was hell. It was absolute hell. Um, something I had never experienced before because the last two times they gave me narcotics in the hospital, um, throughout my entire stay, um, there is a severe headache and nausea. Even though the lady injected me with the thing to help me with my nausea, it wasn't working anymore. Um, yeah, uh, headache, nausea, and horrible, horrible pain. Um, and they were giving me the non-narcotics and they just weren't cutting it. Um, and I was crying and complaining and being like, listen, like this really, really fucking hurts. Like, like put me on the morphine drip, like whatever. Like just fucking give me something. And they're like, oh, we can't give you anything. Cause blah, blah. And I'm like, listen, this lady, they, we just dealt with, just loaded me up with everything. You can't give me an extra pill, but whatever. I'm not a drug seeker. I just wanted to not be in hell. And I was in hell and I was awake almost the entire night, um, and my roommate, he was there, they didn't, he had come in, he had been there for like a week, and when he first came in, he was complaining about one thing, and then they found out there's like a million other things wrong with him, so they were, were keep, kept running tests and coming in and asking him questions, so they would come in, and he was an old guy, so they would have to talk loud, and they'd wake me up, um, every time I fell asleep, and it would just make my headache, like, bump. And then uh, I'd be trying to fall asleep. And he'd be watching, or he, I don't even think he was watching it, but the fucking Everybody Loves Raymond was on his TV. And, like, I don't know if you've ever used a hospital TV before, but the speaker comes out of the controller that's in your uh, bed. But because he's an old guy, it was all the way up. So it was just the loudest fucking thing. And it was hell. Hell. Um, but then the next morning, I felt better. Um, oh, I remember, hold on, I remember saying to my mom, uh, when I was, like, suffering, like, I, I threw up on the floor twice, um, and I remember after the first time I puked, I was like, Mom, you know, what would get rid of my headache and my nausea? <coughs> And she was like, what? And I was like, weed. And she's like, I knew you were going to say that. I'm like, uh-huh. So. I had planned on bringing my edibles with me. 
But then I was like, no, they're going to give me the strong stuff. I'm not going to need this. Next time, bring edibles. Always bring edibles. Um, but yeah, next morning, uh, you know, they're like, okay. Uh, they bring out the physical therapist and they're like, Hey, let's see if you can walk. And then I walk, and then they're like, Hey, let's see if you can walk upstairs. I'm like, Hey, I can walk upstairs. And they're like, Okay, let's teach you how to take off your collar and change out the pads and put it back on. And I was like, Okay. And they're like, All right, you're good to go. <laughs> so, um, came home. Uh, like I said, they sent me home with non narcotics. I was taking tramadol and muscle relaxer. I was taking a larger dose of muscle relaxer than they were giving me in the hospital, by the way. They were giving me like a quarter of a pill in the hospital. Don't know why. Um, but they were having me take full pills at home. And that put knocks you right out. So I was at home with my non-narcotic painkiller, my muscle relaxer, <clears throat> and my edibles. Um, kept me asleep for most of the first couple days. I would wake up at intervals and realized that I was still playing Kingdom Hearts 3 somehow. Um, easy game, obviously, if you can play it when you're sleeping. Um, but, um, uh, so one of the side effects of the surgery of having them go through the front. Oh, is anybody still watching? I don't think so, because this has been, this is how I talk, though, so. Um, Anyway, um, one side effect of the surgery because they go in through the throat is they irritate your throat. Um, I still, uh, at almost, uh, around like two and a half weeks out, um, I still have trouble swallowing some things. Um, like bread sucks. Um, but... I basically, I've been eating eggs and pancakes for breakfast every day. Um, eating a lot of yogurt, cottage cheese, shit like that. Protein shakes. So many protein shakes. The metal straw, because I give a fuck. Also, it's great. Metal straw, let me tell you something about metal straw besides saving the environment. It keeps what you're drinking cold. Because the straw gets cold. And then it pulls through a cold straw. I don't know. I think, I, think, I think it tastes delicious. Some people prefer their sodas and beers and stuff in cans. I, I think it's like the same effect. Just the metal. <clears throat> but anyway. Um, yeah, Soft foods and stuff. Uh, my first night home, my mom made chicken and mashed potatoes. And she like shredded up the chicken into like tiny little pieces. Like itty bitty little scraps. But my throat was so swollen that the first piece I ate, even though I had it coated in, like, mashed potatoes and gravy to, like, try and get it down. Um, every time I swallowed it, it did this, like, little backflip in my throat. <clears throat> Until I eventually just, like, made myself cough it up. Um, so, but yeah. Now I'm on to, like, pastas and stuff. Um, but uh, still, like, yeah, no bread sucks um and no like tough meats like steaks uh i think i might try eating vegetables like today i'm not sure because some of them can be kind of rough but uh yeah for the most part it's just been yeah eggs yogurt protein shake after protein shake after protein shake. specifically meal replacement shakes Spe specifically uh like vago one um, I'm not a vegan, as I was just talking about chicken, but if you're going to go with protein, go with vegan protein. Whey protein is disgusting. It just tastes like watered down skim, <clears throat> skim milk, Kool-Aid, like, yeah, watered down skim milk, Kool-Aid. That's what it tastes like. Fuck that shit. Get yourself some vegan protein, especially Vega. They make all their shit taste delicious. And Vega One has like a large array of micronutrients that you need. Um... And, uh, and edibles, uh, I have, uh, tincture, just drop it under my tongue with the weed in it, and then I got, 
uh, from this dispensary out here that delivers. I got a chocolate bar, and I've just been eating, <coughs> eating small pieces of that. Sorry. Letting it just kind of melt in my throat. Alright, I'm going to stop talking, because it's obviously, this is the most talking I've done in a very long time. <laughs> but, anyway, this was not a very uplifting video about this. But I'm just being real, that it sucked. A lot of it sucked. Some of it was cool. Um, I will end it with... Um, I'm going to see my surgeon on Friday. Today's Wednesday. So yeah, in a couple days. And we're going to see if I can, like where I'm at, if I can lift heavier things, um, if I can sleep on my side, if I can take, oh yeah, this neck brace, it only comes off after I get out of the shower to change the pads. So hopefully... After I see my doctor, he'll be like, take it off a couple times a day and move your neck around because, oh my god, I want to do that so bad. Um, I want to look down. That's like my big thing right now, is I want to look down. I don't even care so much about looking up. I can kind of do that anyway. You know, if I like tilt my body back, but like looking down, like directly down at my feet, can't do it. I have to, thankfully I still have a cane from my last two things. Because when I walk outside, I need a cane because I can't look at my feet. Um, uh, but yeah, this is the real deal, this is what happened to me, um, I think I'm healing up nicely, hopefully, uh, you know, uh, a lot of, uh, one of the things I hear the most in, in dealing with all my spinal surgeries is, oh, you're so young for this, and I'm like, yeah, yeah it still happened though, and then when I, in my recovery, they're always like, you're recovering so fast. I'm like, yeah, because I'm like 30 years younger than your average patient. Or like 40 years younger than your average patient. So like, that's why. So hopefully, I'm still young enough that I am healing up fast enough that maybe next video I could take off my brace and show you things. Um, and be a little more positive. Some positive stuff has happened this week. I just, or a couple weeks, it's just mostly been bad. But... Just giving you the truth. Um, however, when surgery was over and my mother was sitting out in the hallway patiently waiting, my doctor walked up to her and said, I have good news. We saved the goatee. And that is what I'll leave you on because he might be He's an amazing surgeon, he might be a bad barber, he's a hilarious human being. And he saved my life three times, and I love him for it. And hopefully he gives me good news in a couple days, and I can give you good news. And if you made it to the end of this video, comment Purple Monkey Dishwasher, because I don't fucking believe you. Peace.